Rhonda and Edie, it's such a pleasure to have you both here, and I appreciated you sending me your beautiful book because though I haven't read it cover to cover, I have looked at all of the pictures in it. That's the way I like to look at those types of books. But you both have a love of Swedish furniture, Swedish accents. Uh, how did your business come about, Edie? Well, Rhonda and I both have some Swedish heritage, but mostly we just found that Swedish lifestyle and painted Swedish furniture is so beautiful and easy to live with and it goes with pretty much every interior, modern, contemporary to country houses. And we really just wanted to share our love with the world. And Rhonda, you work with people who live from coast to coast Absolutely. who have all different types of houses. So does this style of, of decorating work in almost every type of interior? It works in every type of interior from French country to modern to English to Northern European. Everything mixed together looks beautiful. I wouldn't have thought that. That's yeah. interesting. I imagine you have other people who say the same thing, don't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk about just taking a piece of furniture and painting it. And, and my first thought was, well, paint's paint. But this is a bit different, isn't it, Edie? Yes. Cheryl, this is how our furniture arrives um, raw from Sweden. This is unfinished. Unfinished uh -huh. wood furniture. And then what we do is we build up the paint layers. It's not just one spray painted piece with a very flat finish. What happens in Swedish painted furniture, they build up these beautiful so there's layers, multiple layers of paint, multiple layers of bases, primers, paints, and then glazing and waxing, which Rhonda and I are going to show you today. Okay, so we need to see which steps, but we've got one more picture. And this room uh, just shows sort of a finished room with lots of uh -huh. painted pieces, and you can see there's many different textures. There's a dark clock, and we have some lighter gray furniture. But up close, this room has a lot of depth because the paint has many layers to it. It's not a flat look. Well, that's interesting. I, I would have just thought it was a painted box or a painted chair. So how do we go about This is the, well, the Cheryl, raw Well, yes, wood. what you want mm -hmm. to do, you always start with your raw piece of wood and then you want to sand it before. And uh -huh. you can do this with a box, a chair, a table, a clock. Um, and but then wipe it off so you that wipe you it off. The... And the next step is to prime it. Mm -hmm. And this is just a simple primer. And if you want, so this gives a little light coming through the paint underneath. You can also do a darker primer if you're trying to get a richer, deeper look to come through the So green. this is the first layer? This exactly. is the first layer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And so whether you're going for light, you might want to do a lighter thing. If you want richness and darkness, you might want a darker under layer. Oh. Something like a red, perhaps, if you're doing um, more of a country piece. Mm -hmm. what, now, you said this is just any time. We can get this at, at a uh, primer. A paint stores. Any it's just paint any store. primer. Okay. Paint it with a brush. And then Rhonda is going to show you how you can paint the box. The next step is to do your color. And are there certain colors that are typical Swedish? Blues, grays, yellows, reds, um, browns, really any color um, that's naturally influenced. So if you think of the earth. From the earth. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Those are the colors okay. that have been used. Um, we uh, painted this box so it, for, for sake of time. Uh -huh. um, and what I'm going to do is put the glazing on. Now, so this is coat two. This, this is, is coat, coat two. One. This is so coat this two. is the primer, and then this is the paint. And if you look at both boxes, the, the paint is applied um, very lightly. It's mm -hmm. not a, a very solid paint base. So you want to do that so it looks like once you're putting on the layers, there's more depth to the okay. paint. Don't make it so thick. Don't make it so with. thick. So it's very, very simple. You use a wide brush, not too much glaze. And what you're really going to do is just apply. Now this glaze is the same color as the paint? It's a, it's a, a solid clear glaze, but uh -huh. then it has a little bit of the paint uh, mixed oh, in. I see. So it adds that pigment. Uh -huh. So what you're doing is you're adding another layer, That's another dimension layer. to the paint, yes. And on furniture, we could do this on the arms, the legs. On everything, okay. on every piece. And what you're doing is you're really, you're adding the lines of the paintbrush. So you're adding depth and interest to a very, very flat paint. And what we usually tend to use as the second coat paint, the main base paint, is um, milk, milk-based paints. Milk-based. Um, which you mix with yes. water. Uh -huh. um, and those dry very, very quickly. And they um, are very easy to apply. And you can find them online. Um, if you do a Google search for milk paint, a million milk companies. Milk-based paint. Milk-based okay. paint. 
and that's all so natural. So you would let this dry, and then what would be the, you'd go over the entire piece, of course. You go through the entire piece, and make sure you're doing the brush stroke in one direction. Uh -huh. So the, when the light hits it, it's not zigzaggy right. and, and all that. Then you go to the next step here. And that's what this one has had the the glaze. It has, the, has glaze the glaze on. that's now dry. It kind of catch the light. Does and it? I it does. You can see. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to put a finishing wax on it. And you can see the paintbrush detail, which mm -hmm. is really quite so lovely. It's yeah. a little yeah. subtle. And now we're just going to add some wax finish. And this goes on with a brush. This oh, actually, a I like to use a cloth. Uh -huh. And you, you can use a cloth so and a thick or a paste. brush, or yeah. a paste, uh -huh. or a brush, however you like to do it. And then. I'm going to rub it in, and this actually brings out the brush strokes. It's going to get it mm -hmm. a little darker. You can see that. And if you want to, you can actually get a wax that has more some stain in it, some darker stain, and it'll give it more of a brownish finish as Antique. well, uh -huh. antique finish. I see. Well. I've seen that on furniture, this, but I didn't we're really using know a how clear they wax. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is just clear. That's just clear, and that's going to seal the the paint. While she goes ahead and applies that, Rhonda, why don't you talk about frames? I hadn't thought about doing wooden frames. Absolutely. Very typical in Swedish um, design are panels, mm -hmm. um, decorative panels that create uh, a lovely interest in an interior and structure architecturally. So part of the, the interest in the paint and the depth is to create these panels that um, you know, then you can here, draw decoratively. It's on yeah, the ceiling. That, that's interesting. It's they're not just like pieces of artwork. They're right. They're, they're inset extensive. architectural uh -huh. elements. Along here too. Yeah, and that's very typically Swedish. Uh huh. Are there types of, uh, while you're doing that, while you're working, Rhonda, <laughs> uh, are there types of metals that are considered um, typical Swedish to use in homes? Copper. Copper. Copper was, Sweden has, copper. Sweden has the largest copper mines in all of Europe, uh -huh. especially in Fallen Sweden, which is in the northern part of Sweden. And so copper, everyday use copper was used extensively, um, whether you were very poor or very, very wealthy. And you can find copper throughout the farms, up into the castles, and um, they use copper a lot. Pottery wasn't as... Um, as much uh, available because the, the terracotta was very porous and broke. Uh -huh. Not like in France where they have faience that's a lot stronger or ironstone. What about types of fabrics? Do we think of certain, I would think of linen, but Absolutely. are there other types linen, of fabrics? Linen, flax. Flax, um, gingham's. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. gingham's are very popular as well. Oh, I can see the ginghams with yeah. this, this look. This a looks lot of like woven, um, as a matter of fact, my great-grandmother um, still, when she was in school, had to actually, part of an assignment for school to graduate was to actually weave a tablecloth. And that was this very, very fine, beautiful linen. So girls were taught up until, you know, the turn of the century, uh -huh. all these wonderful handicrafts. Mm -hmm. And do you all do that in your business? Do you have any Not of so these much types? the weaving, but the painting. Yeah. And I think what's so great about the Swedish interiors is that... Um, it's all about handcraft, whether you put your signature on hand finishing and painting a piece of furniture yourself and then doing, as we saw in that photo, decorative flowers or the date of a marriage or a birth uh -huh. or weaving your own tablecloth. People really personalize their objects in Sweden. And that's what makes a lot it... Of pride. That's what you all like. Yeah. Especially. And that's what's yeah. sort of fun. And to be able to do a project like this, whether it's a little box or something, it's just, it's really a wonderful thing to have worked on a piece in your own home. It's very gratifying. Well, thank you both very thank much. You. I thought paint was paint, but I can see it certainly has lots of dimensions. Absolutely. Thank you for being with thank us. You, thank you.